Welcome back. We're now joined by Democratic incumbent for State House District 109, Representative Dion Tedder. Thank you so much for being here with us. Um, we just spoke with uh, your libertarian oppo opponent, Rodney Travis. Uh, we heard what platform he was standing on. So tell us a bit more about the platform that you're campaigning right now to keep the seat that you're currently in. Thank you. And thank you for having me here on the show. Um, I appreciate what you're doing, educating the voters on their candidates. Um, and so my platform hasn't changed from when I ran in 2020, uh, which is investing more in our public education, uh, criminal justice reform, and affordable housing. Those are my top three priorities. And criminal justice is something that you know a lot about. You are a criminal attorney. Um, so in what way would you see to improve criminal justice in the district, which represents Charleston and Dorchester counties? Yes, and so that's a good question. Um, as my job as an attorney, um, I've always been fighting for people, uh, but I'm limited within the law on the things I can do for my clients. Um, and specifically in the past five years that I've been practicing law, I've seen um, issues come up where uh, certain laws are just old and, and when they were implemented um, many years ago, uh, the intent, I believe, was to discriminate um, against certain people. Mm -hmm. um, and now, in 2022, it's just a different time. Um, things have changed, um, such as our, our marijuana laws. That's one of the things that I tried to tackle um, in my first term with trying to decriminalize that because uh, particularly in North Charleston, um, you see a lot of uh, people being pulled over um, and the excuse used that officers often smell marijuana. The problem is in court, a criminal defense lawyer cannot challenge that. You can't challenge what a person smelled because it's subjective. Um, so I had a bill that I entered uh, my first year to make this, which stated that the smell and odor of marijuana alone does not give probable cause for a search. Um, and that does not take away the officer's ability to do a DUI stop if they believe a person is under the influence, and certainly they may go through the, the protocols mm -hmm. and steps, but we as defense attorneys can challenge that in court because we still have to protect our clients' rights. I was gonna say, because if a driver is suspected of being under the influence of alcohol and a police officer pulls somebody over and they can smell alcohol on their breath, which would then give way to most likely a test if the uh, driver D wishes to take the test or to be taken into the station. However, they still need to do their job to make sure right. that people are not driving impaired, whether it's under the influence of marijuana, other drugs, or alcohol. That's correct, and, and, and you're certainly right. And if they were to smell alcohol, what they do is um, subject the person to a field sobriety test. They have a breathalyzer they could do, but for marijuana, um, it's simply what we see over and over is in the reports, the officer smells marijuana and then they just search the car based on that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and really it, it's sometimes a fishing expedition. I could talk about this subject for a lot longer, <laughs> but we only have a limited amount of time. Yes. I do have to ask you though, a big problem with this particular area with North Charleston is the rate of crime. I mean, violent crime is up, the use of firearms is up, aggravated assault is up, or it's just as bad as it was a few years ago. So what have you done so far in your term to correct these things, to make things better? So what, what we've done was we've tried to tackle some things with criminal justice reform, such as sentencing reform. Uh, we didn't get to pass that this past term. Uh, but what we've seen is that obviously, um, you know, even as a lawyer, I see an uh, increase in, in gun violence. Um, and so what we're trying to do is strengthen gun laws in the state um, at, at least the Democratic Party, and so we've had we've made efforts to do that, um, increase you know Strengthen background gun checks. laws. Yes, but I mean, if a criminal is wanting to exact a violence on somebody else, they'll figure out another way to do it, whether it's with a gun or a knife or something else. So what I'm asking is, with the rate of recidivism that we have in this country, generally speaking, what is the problem that we're up against that's not getting fixed when criminals come back out again right. and keep committing crimes? As I just read, the, according to North Charleston, the rates are climbing. Right, and, and so we've had some talks about that in the legislature, um, particularly with bond, with how the bond system works. Um, and so there's been talks around maybe restructuring that um, because I know an issue is, and I think our magistrate judges have caught a lot of flack on, um, you know, 
letting people out on bond who have prior records. The problem is within the law, uh, the way the law is currently written, certain offenses allow for those people to be out. And so those well, are things we have to take a look at. A lot of people, they, they don't want bond at all. And, and that just right. seems wrong. Right, yeah. But people will vote at the ballots and they're gonna vote on November 8th. I wanna thank you, Dion, for joining us. Thank you. We're back after this.